not willing to give you that self worth after you break up with them, don't don't lower it or belittle yourself or chase them because they're gonna only do it again to you. Right. And if you don't set that hard boundary, I mean, and we got back together, we I had set that boundary, and you knew what I expected, and you were ready to give that to me, and you did give that to me. And that's what I'm saying. You really have to set that hard boundary. Yeah. For you, it's hard. It's it wasn't easy. I'm not gonna tell you. I'm gonna sit here and lie to you and tell you. Oh, it was easy, and I, and I was able to do it with, in a, you know, with no issues. No, it was hard, but you have to deep down believe in yourself and believe in what you're worth, and believe that the work that you've put in yourself uh, that you're worth it. Yeah. So, overall, in order to create healthy boundaries in a relationship, it sounds like first step you need to create your own self awareness. You need to make sure you know who you are and what you want. To you need to have clear communication with your partner. They need to understand your mindset, where you're at. Three, you need to be assertive. You need to let them know what you like and what you don't like, because that's going to be the only way that they are going to understand your boundaries. Um, and then you need to define them to them. So be assertive and define them um, and, and continue to be consistent with that. It also sounds like um, another step is prioritizing self-care. You need to make sure you're happy because you can't be happy in a relationship unless you're happy, like you were saying, and nobody else can make you happy. No. You have to prioritize your own self-care and then seek support. If seek support in a therapist um, or like you said, a psychiatrist, if someone may have a, a disorder, um, you know, there's always help out there. So it sounds like those are the steps um, in creating healthy relationships. We left one main one out, which is trust. Trust. I, well. Trust. Um, by, by trust, I mean this like little trust. Like I go to jujitsu, you know, 6 a.m., two days a week. And sometimes I go to lunch class. I go on the weekends. I know when I go, Jet's not, you're not like worried. Is he cheating on me? Let me go drive to jujitsu and see where he's at. See if he's telling the truth. Let me go. Uh, let me call him 17 times and see if he'll answer the phone. Let me. Trust is very important. If you don't have that trust and someone's broken that trust, it's hard to come back from that. You have to have trust. Like when, when Jet says she wants to go out to a concert with her sister or she wants to go have a girl's night. Bye. Uh, bye. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not driving to where she's telling me she's at. Or blowing up her phone to see if she's answering it because I have trust in her blindly. I have trust in her because that's just a relationship that we've built. Well, it's not blind because we've built it. We've we've well, earned now the it's trust. Blind. Right, right. Like in each other. Now, if I go to call her, um, you know, just to see what she's doing, if she's if I just say, you know, I send her a text or I call her and she's not coming home to two o'clock in the morning and she hasn't been answering my phone calls. I mean, that's a, uh, that's going to be a line that you cross in a relationship. Same thing with me. If I go somewhere and I go out, um, I think I went out one time. I went to Raleigh with a friend of mine. We went to a bar and we had dinner and I think you text me like at one o'clock in the morning. Hey, are you good? And I responded back to you. I'm like, yeah, sorry. We're just a uh, friend wants to go to another bar and uh, we'll be home shortly. You know, those kind of things like don't ignore your partner don't ignore their insecurities. Don't ignore, you know, how they're feeling, you know, be open and honest with, with, with your spouse. Don't ignore them and then get home and then get up in the morning and gaslight them and say, Hey, well, you don't trust me. No, I don't trust you because of your actions. Right. So if your actions are one thing uh, and then your, your words are another, what am I going to believe? Yeah. I'm going to believe your actions. That's what I've learned. I used to believe people's words over their actions, but no, you believe their actions over their words because people can be very manipulative. It's just like the episode that we watched on Love is Blind the other day, that, that <laughs> terrible show you made me watch. <laughs> Trash well, TV. <laughs> Trash TV. The, one of the guys went out uh, to a bar, told her he was going out, but he didn't respond to her calls or texts. He came home at 545 in the morning and he lied to her about where he was. But his watch actually tracked his location and she could see she could it. See where he was she, at. So she already knew before she, she asked. She knew him. where he was at and he lied to her and he had he was talking to one of the other girls and he was sitting in the car with her in the parking lot when in actuality he was sitting in front of her her car was sitting in front of her house and he had lied to her. So again, he was telling her one thing, right, but his actions told a different story. So 
believe people's actions over their words. Yeah. Uh, back to the trust. If you don't have that trust, it's hard to build boundaries with someone. Okay. So the final step is to make sure that you have built that trust up. Right. Right. So. Yep. Well, thank you guys so much for tuning in to this episode of The Baggage Claim. It's always great to have a special guest, especially my husband, um, because we sit around and we talk about stuff like this all the time. And we are going to start recording these more often. And please send me a message on if there's any topics that you feel that you would want to hear from us. We'd love to have the topics that you guys want to hear. So thank you so much for tuning in.